New forensic evidence has emerged that challenges the conviction of a man for one of the most notorious multiple murders of a generation, the killing of five members of his own family in a remote Essex farmhouse in 1985. The man convicted of those murders, Jeremy Bamber, has been pleading his innocence for 25 years. The prosecution case was that Bamber, using a silencer, had gone into the farmhouse in the dead of night, murdered his own family, including his adopted sister and her children in their sleep. His defence was that it was his sister who had a history of severe mental illness that had carried out the murders and then killed herself. During the trial, scratch marks, allegedly created by the murder weapon, played a key part in his conviction. Now, new evidence suggests these marks were made after the murders took place. In this case, the scratch marks underneath the mantel shelf turned out to be the most significant um, bit of evidence that we came across. The scratch marks, which were central plank to the prosecution's assertions, those scratch marks, um, it now appears, were not in fact made on the night of the murders and were in fact made at some point afterwards. For that reason, the significance of Mr Souther's findings really cannot be overestimated. On the morning of the 7th of August 1985, police entered White House Farm to find the bodies of Neville and June Bamber, their adopted daughter Sheila Caffell and her twin sons, Nicholas and Daniel, aged six. Initially, the police believed that it was a case of murder-suicide, that Sheila Caffell, mentally ill and terrified that her parents would force her to put her children into care, had killed them all and then turned the gun on herself. But days later, the discovery of a silencer in a cupboard changed their minds. The police concluded that she couldn't have killed herself and then put away the silencer. So it must have been Jeremy Bamber who carried out the murders. It was this silencer that would lead to Bamber's conviction. The prosecution argued that a struggle had ensued between Neville Bamber and his son. This led, they said, to the silencer on the gun scratching marks on the kitchen mantel shelf. Except new photographic evidence by one of Britain's leading forensic experts shows that pictures on the day of the murder, August the 7th, show no scratch marks on the mantel shelf. The court had believed that these um, the scratch marks underneath the mantel shelf had taken place during the incident itself. That was something which the uh, jury and the prosecution relied upon in order to convict Mr. Bamber of the um, crime. It was possible to line up all these um, pictures in jigsaw fashion uh, to show that the um, scratch mark uh, from the underside of the mantel shelf did not extend into the uh, picture of the mantel shelf taken on the 7th of August, the time of the incident itself. So the marks had been put there after the original incident. Peter Southers to find a second piece of evidence that also convinced him that the scratch mark evidence was unsigned. I was looking for traces of paint particles uh, which would have dropped from the mantel shelf onto the um, carpet below the mantel shelf, directly in front of the oil cooker. Uh, I, I looked very carefully at the uh, carpet and there was no evidence whatsoever of any paint particles or any wood particles or anything like that there uh, I, when I would have expected them to be there if the marks had occurred on the 7th of August. But it's not just this new photographic evidence that Bamber's lawyers are putting forward to appeal against his conviction. They are challenging it on seven additional grounds. And they also say it's unacceptable for the police to continue to withhold documents relating to the case. Overall, the, um, while we have worked very hard to obtain full disclosure, it is our understanding that um, a significant volume of evidence remains undisclosed in this case. Uh, and that is something which we have requested on several occasions but to date, um, we have not received full disclosure. We feel more confident than ever that there is now a real possibility that this conviction would not be upheld. And we therefore 
feel confident that the CCRC should now make a referral to the Court of Appeal as soon as possible. Is it possible that one of the most reviled murderers of our time, Jeremy Bamber, has served 25 years for a crime that he didn't commit? There is a potential here for perhaps the most serious miscarriage of justice in the history of the British legal system.